Greetings, this is Dr. Bobby Price, your plant-based pharmacist and nutritionist, also author of Education Over Medication. And today I have a really interesting topic I'm gonna to be talking about today. I had made a video at the beginning of the pandemic and the whole purpose of the video was really to sort of, you know, uh, calm the nerves of many people who were really frightened by a lot of the fear mongering that was going on initially in the media um, a lot of things that they didn't know that they were actually reporting on. And so here we are almost eight, nine months into the pandemic. And basically one of the focuses of the video was make sure you maintain your peace during the pandemic. Cause one of the things you don't want to do is stress because stress actually kills the good bacteria in your gut, which is responsible for 70 to 80% of your immunity. And so, I'll I'll put the link inside of the uh, inside of the notes below that you can check out that video if you didn't. Uh, but today is really a follow up. Here we are, like I said, beginning eight to nine months later, and so now people are asking, well, you know, I've been trying to maintain my stress and make sure I don't stress about this, so I don't, you know, negatively affect my immune system. But what can we be hopeful about? And what do we know now? Uh, here we are eight, nine months later. So that's what I'm gonna be speaking on today. Uh, and so what I'm gonna focus on today is herd immunity. Um, some people have heard of this. Um, and even if you haven't heard of this, it is in effect. And I'm gonna explain what it is. But before I do that, what I really wanna do is sort of give some background and give you guys an idea about how viruses work uh, in, in terms of the, like the disease pathway. So it helps you understand how humans have been sort of matriculating this process and how our immune system actually fight against viruses, okay? Because this is not the first virus. It's not the first virus that went wildfire. Uh, and so what I wanna do is kind of give you guys some education so then you know uh, sort of a, a new viewpoint on this. So. Typically, when you're looking at viruses, they either work one or two ways. So uh, one way it could work is like a virus like herpes simplex, one or two, or HIV. And in that case with the virus, the virus uh, infects the patient. And once it infects the patient, initially it flourishes, so it grows rapidly inside of the body. And as it grows rapidly inside of the body, your body mounts an immune response. And at some point it plateaus, okay? So like say in the case and point with herpes, uh, you initially get it, it may be dormant. You may not even know that you have it in the beginning. And then at some point uh, your immune sy system is suppressed and so you have an outbreak, okay? And then your immune system is uh, built up or you know, uh, mounts a response and then the outbreak goes away. Okay, so in many cases, um, that's how the disease will work in terms of a virus where it goes into the body, you pretty much have it lifelong, but it establishes some type of equilibrium with the body, but it lies dormant, okay? On the other case, you have viruses that affect the body and create immunity. And I'm gonna explain what that means. So you'll have something like the measles or the flu where you catch the virus, right? So let's say it's uh, H1N1 flu. Let's say it's the measles, you get the measles. And then as a result of getting the measles, your body mounts an immune response against, against it. The B cells in your body and other cells in your body create this, essentially a roadmap on how to kill the virus. And so it creates immunity against this virus. So let's say you were to come in contact with the virus two weeks later, you already have a roadmap. So it comes into your body, you fight it off. You never even know you have the virus because now you have immunity to the virus, okay? Because your body has created what is known as antibodies, okay? So a lot of people have heard recently people getting antibody tests for the COVID, okay? And what they're doing is seeing if a person who's been affected by COVID has actually created an immune response to that virus, okay? And so they're seeing that with people. So we know that, you know, this virus is reacting like other viruses. So that's a really point of great hope for us, right? We know that our immune system can mount a response to it. 
And we also know our immune system can mount a response to it because we see people all the time who are getting positive COVID tests, but yet and still they are asymptomatic, which is telling you that the immune system is actually working. So, so you have those two ways that a virus can work. A virus can come into the body, uh, not establish immunity, um, grow and proliferate, and then at that point it plateaus and it lies dormant in the body. Or you have the virus with, uh, that I mentioned in the latter, like a measles, like a herpes, like a COVID, like a flu that comes in the body. Your immune system mounts a response to it and creates immunity, okay? The same way, it's the same, the same premise is what they brace vaccines off of. So it's based off of our natural immunity, which we do anyway. We create antibodies, which is essentially like creating immunity against it, okay? And so it's really important to understand that we have a natural process for doing what vaccines are designed to do, okay? So that's the first point. Now, how do epidemics or pandemics typically work? okay in the in the population now typically what happens is when you have a new virus it comes into um it comes into contact with the population it grows expands all right and and it grows and expands until it would it pretty much wastes its resources and what that means is it grows until there's no people who can be be infected anymore okay and once it gets to a certain threshold, that threshold is known as the endemic threshold, okay? It means that it has affected enough people that at that point is so many people infected by it and those people have created immunity to it, like I mentioned beforehand, creating the antibodies, that these people actually protect other people who haven't been affected by it. So children and you know other adults who haven't come into contact with the pathogen, okay? And this is what is known as herd immunity, okay? It means that the vast majority of the herd or population comes into contact with the pathogen, they create immunity, and by a large percentage of that population creating immunity, they actually create protection for other people, okay? And so that is that is exactly what happened in places like Japan, for instance. While we were locked down and much of the world was locked down, Japan actually decided not to do a lockdown, okay? They decided to uh, depend on herd immunity. And so Japan has essentially had a very low uh, coronavirus infection rate and they've done quite well as a result of that. Now there's been other countries that have done it as well, but essentially that is what we do with other viruses as well. So. Let's think about it. Um, the um, This new coronavirus uh, that just came out, and I say new because there are coronavirus. There are four other seasonal coronaviruses. So uh, you guys are probably more familiar with things like SARS and MERS. SARS came out, I believe, in 2002. There was an outbreak. Um, it outbreak, it grew in the population, and then boom, it was gone, okay? That's herd immunity. So it grew, expanded, got to that endemic threshold. Once it got there, it was enough people who had the virus, had built immunity to it, it actually protected other people. Same thing with MERS, okay? Um, and that's typically what we see. And these are viruses that we did not create vaccines for. And that's the important point that I want people to understand is that there have been cases where there were huge outbreaks. People did die, unfortunately. Uh, but essentially what happened, we practiced herd immunity. We didn't create a vaccine for it. We didn't shelter in place. We didn't wear masks as a whole, uh, you know, and as a result, we actually created immunity, our herd immunity, which protected other people. So that's a really important point to understand that there are plenty of other viruses that we have not created vaccine for. And as a result, we use herd immunity and that herd immunity actually allowed us to actually, you know, build immunity that protected other people. Now, what's important to understand is that viruses can come back in waves. So it could be 10 years later and that same virus will come back. But the thing, the important note to note, to understand about that is this, when viruses come back and you've been affected by it, 
the second infection time or the second time you're exposed to the virus, the severity is much less. So let's say, for instance, you, if you got the virus this, this go around and you were asymptomatic, more than likely, if you get exposed to it again, you will be asymptomatic as well. If indeed you have, you know, you're living a lifestyle that protects and keeps your immune system boosted, not suppressed. Okay. And also what we know, uh, based on the other coronaviruses that I mentioned before, MERS and SARS, uh, when you build those antibodies, those antibodies last about five or 10 years. So when you get exposed to the virus, which are other coronavirus, SARS and MERS, when you get exposed to them, that immunity, that natural immunity, not from a vaccine, but that natural immunity will last you five to 10 years. So again, that immunity will last you, let's say up to 10 years. And then let's say you come into contact with the virus again, guess what? Um, the second go around, the severity is gonna be much less. So if you were asymptomatic before, you're more than likely to be asymptomatic. If you were very severe from before, you'll probably be mild or asymptomatic. And so that's what we've seen in terms of the pattern. So that's what I wanted to come in here and kind of give you guys a little bit of background on what herd immunity is. It is something that is very common, well known in science, but unfortunately, uh, most of the lay people in the population don't understand or know about herd immunity. But I think it's a very important topic because uh, one of the unfortunate things is okay, you know, uh, people are waiting for a vaccine, but I, and a lot of people are, you know, afraid that one one won't be created in time. But the important thing to understand is that they're creating this vaccine at an astronomical rate. Like, you know, typically it takes years, even a decade to create a vaccine and they're trying to do it in months. And um, the unfortunate thing about trying to do something like that, it can be very dangerous. At the, in the grand scheme of thing, the initial people who take the vaccine could possibly be, you know, um, the guinea pigs. So um, to kind of ease you know, a lot of people's thoughts around your whole idea around there may not be a vaccine in time or what are we going to do? It's important to understand that nature has already created a solution for us. And that solution is herd immunity. So I hope you guys have enjoyed the video. Uh, if you did, make sure you subscribe below, hit that notification button so that in the future, when I have new videos, uh, you'll get that notification for it as well. Uh, make sure you comment below as well. Uh, let me know what you think. And also let me know what new content you would like me to bring forth in the future. So I hope you guys, again, have enjoyed this, this video. If you like it, again, subscribe, hit the notification button, and also share it. Until the next time, peace and blessings and Godspeed.